Welcome, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use variants in Figma. It's a brand new thing and I'm super excited to talk about it. This thing literally just came out a few days ago. Anyways, let's jump in, I can't wait to show you. Before we jump in the video, I just also wanted to talk about what variants are very briefly and I'm gonna talk more about it in the video when I actually jump on my computer. But pretty much variants are kind of the idea of it is when you have, a lot of times you have buttons within Figma and you might have a rollover button, you might have a focus button, you might have a default button, you might have a button with icons, so you'll have sometimes hundreds and hundreds of buttons. Using variants, you're actually able to have all these buttons live within just one button and you can have some easy, easy selections that you can just scroll through very quickly. To better understand how variants work, I actually downloaded this file directly from the Figma community and I'll leave you in the link. I'll leave you a link for this in the description so you can experiment with this as well. But just really quickly to show you how this kind of works, I actually had to go over this a few times myself to kind of fully get it and I still don't exactly understand everything. But this is a brand new feature that Figma has kind of came up with within the last few days. So I've been really excited in trying these things out and there's a lot of people excited about this in the Figma community. So basically you could see here, the, they're showing a little example of you can how variants would work as far as buttons. So you see there's one type of button and you could potentially have multiple buttons that live within one component. It will make a little more sense when we go through some of these screens. And let me just move on. So the content is this, what we're, the, so this a kind of a, a file will explain to you what variants are and the migrating. It will also will go over migrating from existing components and converting them into variants. We're gonna go through creating variants from scratch. We're gonna align, kind of show how it works with code and a few examples of that as well, and then some additional resources. So let's see, so we're gonna go to this first screen. So what are variants actually? So this would be better to, exp so you can kind of understand more. So variants are a new way to create organize and use components. If you've ever created multiple variants of a component, you will want to give variants a try. So pretty much you could see here as an example on top here, this is kind of how components work before, like this top part, you would have a button A, button B, button C, and button D, and those were all, those will all be independent components. And now with variants, you can pretty much have, everything's just one button, and button A through D just kind of all live within that button. And, you, and it will make more sense when we get to some of these screens. So as an example, you can see here what we just what we just talked about. You have these buttons. We would have the default button, hover button, focus button, and disabled button, all separate components. And using the new var variants uh, feature, it would, again, it would live in just one button and then within that one button there would be various menus that you can select which specific button you want to use. Uh, let's see here. And also this is kind of how it works with code. This kind of explains to you. You can check that out yourself in the document, but it kind of works. This is how developers do things as well. The way that they set buttons up, they would have a primary type, it would have a large, and then the icons would be say something like true or false for the icons to show. So it's very similar to how developers are already working. So it's just kind of showing us that. Then in this example, what I'm going to do right now is kind of go through migrating from existing components to um, to this new vari variant um, kind of inside. And if you've already made components, this is saying if you've already made components within your design system, you'll probably want to start here. Again, this is an example where you're going from an existing components that you've made and converting them into kind of a, into a, a variants here. So as an example, this would be a, a real life example of your uh, component that you might have. This is, would be something that would live in navigation, maybe like in a, in a mobile device or something like that. You would have your home screen, you would have a search screen and a play screen, right? Something like that. So basically, and this has some instructions here on the left side, it's kind of telling us to basically convert all those components. And I'm going to open up the left side here and you could see that these are components because they have that, you know, that, that familiar kind of icon that we're used to seeing when something is a component. 
So I'm choosing all three components as the instructions say, tell, are telling me here to so select all these components. And you have this new uh, button combined as variants. And I can just choose that. And now notice it just made this uh, bar, kind of the squiggly uh, purple blue bar around. And all these components now, now live within one. So here on the side, I'm gonna undo that actually a couple of times. I'm gonna undo that until we get rid of that. So you can see here, you have here on the side, you have tab, uh, these three tabs. And when I'm clicking com combine as variants, it puts it into one, right? So now it lives in this one place. Um, let's see here. So going to the next steps. So now that we've created that, we could come here on acids and I can tap. You could see that we created, we already have our component. This component didn't exist before um, until we just created what we did. So it, yeah, it's telling us to do tab bar. So we're finding this um, bar and then I'm taking this bar as an example to show you what we just did. And in here on the top side under the uh, components under the under the properties you can see here you can have home play and search so we're changing just from having this one this is just the one selection that we have here and just from that one selection or just from that one component we're able to uh, to have these three options it's also telling us how we can name things and change things around so um, basically, let's see, so I can choose this uh, um, little section here and it actually already has the names and it's saying the properties. So yeah, it, you know, it has home play. I just want to show that I can move these around. So if I go to notice it has, just as an example for you, it has home as the very first icon and then play as the second, but it's going to the third one. And search is the third one from the top here, but even though it's going, so we can change that around here by going back here, selecting this, and you can actually put, you can move this around, you could drag this and put this this way. Um, so now we can see we just fixed that. So we come, if we come to this uh, section, we select it, and now we have home, which is the first one, search, which is the second one, and play, which is the third one. Uh, I know it took me a couple times. I had to try this a couple times to really be able to digest this information and really kind of see how this works. I promise you, this is a super, super awesome, amazing feature. And if it's a little bit confusing right now, just uh, stick with me. It's going to get a little more clear, hopefully. And really the thing to do is just get this file. You can download it from the Figma community and just experiment with this as well because the level of power that this has is has is uh, very very high it's unbelievable actually how powerful this uh this feature is i've never seen anything like that before with with a tool like this uh let's see here so um tab bar yeah so let's see so property so let's let's move on to the next kind of steps and you could see it gets a little more complicated so this is a complex variant now and we could see here that uh, there's quite a bit of buttons and this is kind of kind of how a real life uh, style system or design system would, would exist right you would have a primary button you would have a hover state a focus state and a disabled state and then you would have primary with icons and all those other states we just mentioned and a secondary with all with the uh, different states that we just mentioned and a secondary with icon so uh, just as a practice here it's telling us we so these are all also components and I'm going to open up my layers here on the side so you could see here that these are just all components right that exist here on the side and they're not variants yet so what what it's telling me to do is kind of select all of these and combine as variants right so it says here number one select all the button components and combine them again like you did in the last example so we're, we're doing that combine as variants now they're combined now it's telling us to follow some instructions on the next screen. So I'm going to the next screen. I have this thing selected. So this is showing us kind of how naming and stuff like that would work, how the naming would work. So by default, when we combine those, um, those buttons together or we combine all those components together, it created some properties, property one, property two, and property three. These other words uh, like uh, disabled and focus, this, these happen because what I mean by that, let me let me show you what I mean. So 
there's some information here where it says disabled, focused, and hover. And the, re and the reason we get that is because of the way that it was named uh, below. So you could see here how it's disabled, uh, focused. So that's so it's important to name these uh, buttons correctly. And, we'll, and I'll show you that in a, in a couple more screens that's coming up. But for now, so we just created that uh, variable as one or variant, not variable. So the variant is just one. So now the whole thing is just called button. And I could come here and just search for button. And we could see here that we have this one button and all these buttons live within that one. All right, so you could see here, they all like have property. See so it says property one, two, and three, which are not very descriptive for us, but we're gonna change that. But just to show you that I can come here this is the button that we just that we just made and I can come here and kind of select any of these things I want with icon without icon so all these things just live within button one button very powerful going back to kind of some of the naming uh, convention here so and I'm just gonna follow this instruction so I have this variant selected I'm coming here to uh, to the side and it's telling me to select uh, for the new Button component set in the variant selection of the properties panel and name each property. So uh, let's see here. So so the property. So see here, it says we want to change this to type. We want to change this to state, and we want to change this to icon. Right? Why do we want to do that? Because right now it's just said property one, property two, property three. We want to be. We want to make those something a little more descriptive. So that's what we're going to do. So it's going to make a little more sense than just saying property one, th two, one, two, three. And I'm gonna come here and call this thing type. So I'm typing that word in, type. Then I'm coming into property two and I'm changing that to state. And I'm coming to property three, following the instructions, type, changing that to icon. So now that we did that, now I can click on this button and notice now instead of type, property says type, secondary, state. Now it says type, state, and icon, right? Instead of those property. So now we know the type of button it is, it's primary. So it's a primary button. Uh, the state is focused. And is it with icon or without icon? Let's say it's without, let's do with, with icon, right? So now it's descriptive with the property names. There's also something called Boolean val uh, values, which is really, really cool. Basically, it allows you, it's more like a true or false situation. So we, we see here that with the icons, we have something where it's just, uh, it's just like you have an icon or you don't have an icon. So that's a Boolean option. So when you do a Boolean option, you will get these little, these little triggers and I'll show you, I'll show you how that works. So we have, so we'll come to this uh, section. I'm selecting that and I'm coming here with the, to the icon. And here it says, when you use Boolean values, true or false or on or off, it creates a toggle switch that lets you choose between one of the two values. So that's very, very cool. So I'm gonna change this to, um, actually I'm gonna put true first. And then, oops, I'm gonna put true. And here I'm gonna put false. So let me show you what that does now. Now that we did that with the select, and now when we come here to the button, I'm choosing this button. And now before, instead of, see now, now it added this, um, kind of created this little switch for us to be able to turn off or on the icon. See, I'm turning that on. Let me get a little closer here. I'm turning this on. And I'm able to have the icon come off to sh when it when it's on it shows the icon when it's off it doesn't show the icon and it remembers that for all the different states super cool super amazing i love that it's awesome um it's really really awesome and also it's telling us here that we can switch these around if we want to so i have this selected i could come here and say this is what this is reordering property so i can come if i want to change uh these around i definitely could do that by hitting this thing and just moving, like if I wanna have that on top, now I have state on top, or if, or if I wanna have um, type underneath, I can put that underneath. I think the order that we had, it was pretty pretty good already. Again, so I'll put that back to the bottom, of put the icon at the bottom, and I'll put the state over here. So basically it's very, very flexible, and you can move stuff around, and just really, really powerful. 
so using our new button so basically we just did that so it's, it's telling us to practice so we can do that again come in here and use our button this is how you would use it potentially in a real life uh, situations you might turn on the label you might have it focused or maybe um, hovered how it would look like when it's hovered and you, maybe you would use a secondary uh, button so it's very very flexible and you have all that stuff built in moving on to the next screens um, oh yeah it's, this is kind of showing how the naming works as I explained and you could read this in more detail but basically the way the naming works is um, let me show you the name basically the way that the naming works is kind of how how you have these dashes and comma separations um, and it just explains that here on this thing so when you have so yeah so you have these kind of you would have button then you have a slash primary slash default slash without so it kind of uses i'll read this to you so it makes more sense you might be wondering how figma interpreted each property when we combine all of the components when components are named with forward slashes usually to group components into hierarchical menu figma will interpret the first group as the name of the component set each subsequent group is treated as a new property and its values are populated from all unique names at the same level so basically just the way that you name them kind of how we talked about this naming the way it's named here and this kind of converts it and makes it adds these uh, properties and this information for you which is all then edited uh, you can then go afterwards and edit all that stuff just very quickly i know this is a little bit more of the boring stuff but it's important to kind of set that up to make sure that uh, everything is named correctly and then things will just work will just work right so let's see let's go now to this part so this is going to be how creating how you can be creating very uh, variants from scratch so we just did some variants and we created them from existing components and now we're going to do a couple examples where we're creating them from scratch so in this example this is an alert banner so this exists as a component already you could see here on the side it's a banner and it lives there so what we're going to do is first we're going to actually it's not a component it's just a bunch of it's just uh, some uh, uh some layers and stuff like that there so what we're going to do is convert this into a component so i'm going to click this button here to create it to a component now we see that we got that little icon that represents components so now it's a component and now we're going to convert this component into a variant so that's here on the side variants and i can hit this little plus here on the side i'm clicking that and now i clicked it and now it made this into a variant for me and i could also come here and choose this plus uh i uh button i'm hitting that and it created another one for us as well so now we just created this all from scratch from that one component now i'm going to come here and i'm going to actually so there's going to be what we're going to do here is create three different kind of uh states one is going to be an error state, one is going to be an info state, and one is going to be a success state. And let's see, so I'm just going to choose, I'm just going to sample this color, and I'm going to sample this color for success. I'm going to probably just remove the border and remove this border. So now we have these three kind of uh, um, different sections that we just made, uh, three different variables con connected from one, and then it tells us to follow a couple of different instructions here. Uh, basically just naming it correctly so it's easy to, to choose let me just show you how it is right now or how how it works already or what, what we've already done without any of the work so this is the banner i'm taking this banner out this is what we just created this didn't exist before and you can see here that on the side it says property one default so variant two and variant three which are not descriptive we don't know what that really means but we know that we have three of them so we want to go in there and just kind of make these words make more sense instead of calling property one and variant two they'll be called what they actually are whether it's a um, error or info or success and here it's telling us how to do that so let's see so following these directions we'll do that and then here following more directions so this will be called type so we'll come here in the banner and then the property here we'll change that from property we'll call it to type right because it's a type of banner so I'm changing that to type and then I could come here and choose this first one and here see on the side it says type and the default it says default so from default I can change that and have it say error 
and I'm hitting enter. Now we can come here, the one we, that we created there earlier. I can choose that and see here it says type and it says variant two and an error. That's the error one that we made. Now we're going to change the second one and the third one as well. So remember this is two and three, variant two and variant three. And we'll, I'll show you what happens when we call it, what it needs to be called. So this is from variant two will be called info. So now I just change that to info and this one, I'm clicking on it here and this component that's inside the variance. And then I'm clicking that and calling it success. So now that one says success. And now we could see here that we have type, which is one is error, info and success. So now it makes more sense instead of words like properties and variants. And yeah, basically that's what we did here. Now it's telling us to kind of test it out, which we already did earlier. So I'm just putting that in here and just very quickly trying that out. As you already saw that it works successfully. Error, info, and success. Um, I, I, again, I suggest trying these this file out and trying these things out, making sure so you could, that, will, that will show you kind of practicing and kind of changing the names and everything like that. And you'll see how, how, how interesting it is and how it works. Okay, so this one's a little more complicated. Let's try this one out. Hopefully I didn't lose you yet, but this is all really valuable to kind of understand, to kind of understand that this, the way that this works. So this is more for, for naming stuff. And I'm going to choose this. I'm going to choose this whole thing here and it's selected and in the names. Um, so here it's going to start by selecting the input components set, follow the additional instructions in the sidebar on the uh, to the right. And I'm skipping some of the stuff just because I don't want the video to take too long. It's already going to, going to take quite some time for the video. Uh, okay, anyway, so I have this selected and what I'm going to do is it says Figma starts off by creating an, an initial property. Let's rename it to type. So it's naming an initial property and we're going to name it to type. So the property currently is property one, changing that to type. And so we did that and now we're going to, now it's saying to add another property. So we have the variance here and I'm adding another property. And this one is going to say, and then it's, I'm going to add state. There's another one. So now we have two properties. One is state and one is type. Now adding new value. So Figma creates a default value for every property as we saw earlier. Um, let's choose this and we see here the type here. It says default and state is default. So they're all on default. So now it's telling us to uh, Figma creates default values for every property. Let's add more meaningful names. Select all of the inputs on the left hand column and variants now and add a value input for the type property. So they're all inputs. So here's what we're going to do. This was actually confusing to me when I first read it, but I experimented and I was able to understand, but pretty much we're going to choose all the left side. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And now all this left side is selected. It's going to, we're going to put the word input, right? Cause this is text input. So this is what we're putting in. We're coming here on the type and just putting input. Now I put input there and repeat the same steps, but with the right hand column and variance call it select. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And on the type, I'm going to put select because it's a selected field. So this is select. So now it's that. Um, so now we can see here on the variance, we have the select and we have input as the type and the state is still a default. So now I'll show you how to quickly change that as an example, it's showing us, well, I'll, re I'll re just read this to you. So it says, repeat the exact same steps to add additional values for your next states for our error, uh, stat example, select both error vari variants and in type in a new value besides the state prop, we'll call it error. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. So, so for example, this error one, I'm choosing this one and this one, they're both error. I'm coming here on the side and the state, I'm changing that to error. And now you could see 
I select this thing, you could see that we have an error state. Now you would go and do this with all the rest of them, but I'm not going to do all of them. Let me just do one more real quick. Let's do the success one. So I'm going to choose this one and this one. And I'm going to choose here where it says default. And I'm just going to type success. So now these two are under success field. I'm choosing this variant. And now we have error and we have success under the stat. So yeah, and then you would go in and kind of select all of them and do the rest of it. And what we just made is this. This is the this is the variant that we just made. So here you could see that it's input or select. Put that so you could see it a little bit better. So it has input and select. So it has this little icon when it's select. And input, it doesn't have the icon and stat state. So we did the error, which is that's the error state and the success state. So those are the two different success the two different states that we did. And actually, let me just do the rest of them for you. And I'm just going to, so you won't have to see it. I'll just do the magic of the video. Okay, now I got them all set. So we could see here that we have here on the side, we have the input, select, and we have all these. Now remember, we used to have default. Um, then a lot of them were default. Now we have the focused, we have deactivated field, we have placeholder, success, error, and the field. <laughs> so we have all of them. So you could see that and this pretty much is just one, um, kind of this one, one form field that just has all eight different states built in. Is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, no, 12 different states um, kind of in one. So anyways, <laughs> that is something that's really interesting as well. Now, just very quickly, just for me to show you. So um, here inspecting and aligning to code, right? So this is kind of for your developers, just so you could see how this is really helpful for them. So I'm coming here on the design, you have prototype and inspect. So I'm hitting inspect. I'm hitting inspect here and I'm selecting the switch. And this is something your your developers, you can get this for your developers, you come and copy. So it shows you how when you go to the inspect how you, how um, how good that this could be also for developers because they have this all this kind of information in the ins inspect uh, panel for variants specifically. So developers can now easily copy the information about the variants from the inspect panel. So I'm choosing the switch and you could see here that that exists uh, right there, which is really awesome. Uh, let's see, let's let's just moving on. We're almost done here just a little bit more. So this is just an example of other things that you guys can use this for. So, um, so explore these example variants components get some so this gives you some ideas and see how they how they're set up. This is an example of potential um, potential uh, avatars, how you can use them in this right. So you would have you literally can just have one avatar that you can have these nine avatars live in one. So the best way to do that you would select all of them and you have this naming thing. So you could come here and choose rename. Right, so you can do like a, like a rename uh, thing. So I'm just selecting, I have all these selected um, and I'm just renaming them to, um, to avatar. Right, so now they're um, just called, they're, I wanna just re rename them all. Oops. So see these here on the side, they're named different things and I could just say rename and now they're all named avatar. Uh, but you would have you would put something more descriptive so maybe this would be um actually it would be these forward slashes the best way or the slashes you want to do that and you want to just call it um and just so you could see a little bit better so you could call it that and then you would call it maybe avatar one right but the avatar one would be a unique name right so these would be unique names so it would be avatar slash this might be called like instead of avatar nine it might be like bill and this one might be something like gary right something like that just as an example so you'll see what uh, what that would happen so now we have you would you would call these some na some unique names and then you would choose all these and you could come here where it says create component you would create multiple components so now we actually created multiple components from those and as long as the first one it says uh, they all have the same name within that first one you would come here 
and then you would do combine as variance and this is kind of telling you instructions to do that here i'm just kind of doing it myself since i already did this a few times so combine variance and now this is a variant and now notice i'm going to undo that see that what you had like nine of them or something like that and then when you do combine variance now they all live into in one and it's just called avatar and it just lives as one right so i can come here assets and i can come to the search type avatar and i could just come here and you have this avatar that we just made not just 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 one circle and actually on the property actually let me change that so it's a little better you, you could see here that avatar you have one you have bill gary that we did and you have these other ones as well these may these names don't necessarily make sense because it's just property one and so from property maybe we'll change that to name so property one we'll change that to name and now when we come in these components now it's just like avatar name and the name of the person so maybe that's bill <laughs> even though it's a, looks like it's a female <laughs> or let's choose gary because that's a really good <laughs> that guy looks like a gary <laughs> so we have gary so we have uh, so avatar is the name of the of the of this uh, variant component then you have the name and you have the person's name and then all nine of them just live in that one place uh, pretty interesting see this is a ex uh, quick example of sticky notes how that would work because you can have uh, components within components or you can have variants within within other components so that's pretty cool and this is an example of that so it's saying uh, search assets for note so i'm going to come here and i'm going to put note here i'm not creating anything this is just showing us an example and i'm taking this existing one already and i could come in here and variant i can choose red or let's choose yellow and then i could come directly in here and i can turn that stat on and i could turn this one on as well so it's showing you the power of having variants within within a component that's variant. So you can have you can have multiple layers of kind of a variantception, <laughs> multiple variants within other variants. Very powerful. Let's move on. Oh, this is really cool. So <laughs> this is so cool. So you can have different switches for different platforms, right? So as a set of toggle for different platforms. In this example, the set of variants. Uh, includes a platform property where iOS and Android variants of the switch can exist within the same component. How awesome is that? <laughs> the same switch can exist for both. So look, I'm choosing the switch right now, right? And I'm coming, let's put that, let's put that up here. So we're by the, where I'm switching it. So this switch is, so this switch is iOS. I could change it to Android. So now I have an Android version. I can turn it off. And I can go to to the stat and I can do pressed, I can do unpressed or deactivated, I can do focused, um, and I can do off or on, and it's it's awesome, very awesome thing, right? So I so like literally all these things just live within one within one place, and that's so that's an example of a switch that lives in, um, that just live all these things are embedded within one and it just lives there. And it just keeps things very, uh, very tidy and not not messy. Because otherwise, you would have how, however many this is 12, um, 12, uh, 24, 24 different components that would have to live there. Although this way, you have just one that lives within within this whole thing. Another way to do this when you're doing stuff with illustrations. So I'm choosing this uh, this uh, this little uh, drink here, and I could come here and I can choose green tea. So now it's green. I can add the boba. Or I can do uh, instead of boba, I can do alo, or I can do um, no nothing in there, no topping, so just blank, maybe less, no no ice. So I can go in there and really control. So these are all the different possibilities that exist within this uh, variant, within this variance, and it just lives as one kind of as one thing as well. Very awesome as well. And I think this is the last one, but uh, this is something that also comes up a lot where people are building. Uh, different navigations for mobile devices and for desktop devices and this is or i mean for mobile and for tablet and for desktop this will work as well but in this particular example it's showing for mobile and for desktop i mean sorry for mobile and for tablet so jumping in here you could see so i have this selected and these are the six different possibilities so i'm coming here and i'm choosing device let's keep it on phone i can go to search i can go to prototype and this actually yeah, and I can go to, uh, to to tablet, and it makes it bigger automatically, right? So let's let's move this out of here so it's not distracting for you. Um, and I can go to search, I can go to home, and now this is the tablet version. I can switch back to phone version, 
right? So you can have this 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 kind of component that lives in one place, and you can search and you can switch from tablet and to mobile. And you know you you can have unlimited size. You can have different sizes within there as well. This just shows six possibilities. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the little example that figma had i was thinking i wanted to go over this thing with you guys the, the thing that we just went over i wanted to go over that myself and then kind of create a custom design for you and show you but then i just decided to use figma and hopefully that uh that all made sense i strongly suggest trying this out downloading this file and seeing uh seeing the other there's so many other possibilities that i didn't go over that i'm sure other designers are going to think of and come up with really interesting ideas for for all kinds of uh, 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 things that you, people will be able to try. And also there's some additional resources here that you could click to see, to try different things out. I hope that was, uh, I hope that was helpful for you. Wow, that was a long video. Thank you so much for sticking around and not leaving. Hopefully you're still there. Um, obviously you're there since you're watching this video. But um, yeah, thanks for sticking around and I hope that was descriptive. I know some of it could be a little bit confusing. It did take me a few times. I had to go over it a couple of times for me to kind of get it. I almost get it now too, but I still don't fully, fully get it. There's a couple things that are missing, but for the most part, I get it. Hopefully that was helpful for you. I hope you got some good nuggets out of it. If you are enjoying these videos, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. And also like this video as well if you liked it. And also let your friends know about this video if you know anybody that's interested in this kind of stuff, specifically Figma, design, all kinds of different things I talk about. Share this video with them as well. It might be helpful for other people and it'd just be good to do that. Anyways, I hope you have a good rest of your day or evening and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.